Christopher Columbus came here, and supposedly he was the first person. But it's funny because when you look at the maps of 1400s, North America was already discovered, and there were castles drawn all over it. So who built the castles, right? Who put the castles in the country if supposedly they were just starting to explore it? All right. Welcome to the New Age Human Podcast. We have a really cool episode today on Tartaria. And for the uninitiated, we'll break it down in the beginning. But first, I want to introduce you to a return guest, Matt Roski. Thank you for coming on, my friend. Hello, hello. Welcome. Aloha. Um, I would love to be in Ohio. Uh, Ohio, no. <laughs> Hawaii. Hi. I think it's almost like Ohio backwards. Ohio, Hawaii. Anyways, this is our third episode talking to each other because last time I was like, we have to talk about Tartaria. And he's like, let's go. So if you're not familiar with Matt, he's the founder of Cultivate Elevate. He's a book of knowledge and he's read so many books and is one of those people that are advocating for the spread of the knowledge, the awareness of just our potential and forgotten knowledge as well. And so much more. So we're going to tap into your brain today. So let's just dive right in. Um, what is this magical place or civilization called Tartaria? So Tartaria is history that has been suppressed from our history books. That's the best way to describe it. In my opinion, there was an ancient civilization or ancient species, whichever one you want to call it, which basically built the same type of structures all over the entire world. Right, rather that being in Japan, that being in Asia, that being in Russia, that being in Europe, South America, Africa, Mexico, United States, every single place has the exact same infrastructure. And you know, that relates into this whole Tartarian history because when you look at these buildings, you see like these, you know, they call them like Greco Roman buildings or whatever else, you see this structure or this infrastructure everywhere, right? Every part of the, the world. And you sit there and wonder, hmm. Well, if people were building like that all over the world, maybe they were also very united and connected, right? And we have a lot of disconnect going on with our history right now. You know, they just make up our history and say whatever they feel. You know, they, they, they give us the narrative of the traditional horses and wagons, right? Everybody was on horses and wagons, and they supposedly built all these beautiful structures. And when you look at the, the, the detail of these structures and how you know, just the curvature and the, how it's like etched, right? It almost looks like someone just drew into this, these, this, these, these buildings. You know, you start to think like, uh, how were they on a horse and a wagon? They didn't have, for example, let's say maybe a crane or they didn't have these tools or whatever it may be. They didn't, well, they didn't even have electricity supposedly at that time, mm. you know? So you start to look at that and go, but they were building buildings that were like 10 stories high that looked like castles. Right. So when you get into Tartaria history and you start to look at all this, you see a lot of these buildings have been hijacked by basically a parasitic entity, in my opinion. So you'll see buildings like, you know, maybe a mental, mental institution, a hotel, um, you know, a school. Right. It might be a university. And they usually attach some funny story like, oh, this started in 1902. And, you know, they always give you this date. Right. 1903, whatever. But the building was there before that. And that's when you get into this whole Tartarian history is a lot of this Tartaria itself was on the map, right? When you go to look at these old maps from the 1400s, 1500s, and 1600s, there were all areas of Tartaria and they showed big castles, like massive castles on the map. So you look at this and go, okay, look at how big those castles are and look at the, look at the, the shape of them, right? Some of them being in a star, right? Like a star fort and all of these things. And you sit there and think, okay, so a person on a horse and wagon or a chariot and a horse, right? Because let's go with both narratives. They were building things that were shaped like stars and all different shapes that basically mimic the sky. In the water, in the middle of the ocean, in all these places that it just doesn't make a lot of logical sense. And this is when you start getting into this old world history, because that's what I consider it. It's old world history. When you start getting into this topic, you start seeing a lot of the storyline does not make sense of how some of these buildings were built. And, you know, you start to look at that structure and go, no, I don't think that adds up. And then you add weather, then you add you need water, then you need food, right? Like, let's say this building is on top of a mountain, like Machu Picchu, which is stones perfectly put, stacked on top of each other, that are over 300 tons each stone 
perfectly placed on top of a mountain. You know, you start to th you start to think, you know, how did they get that up there? And did they have food? Did they have water? Did their wagon wheel break? Right, because that's it's always that goofy story and whatever. How did their horses carry them up? You know, we can and and it's funny because the one video I saw, which perfectly just summed it all up, was. My buddy Larry put up a video where they took a rock, like a big boulder, and they put it in the back of the dump truck, and the dump truck completely tipped over. <laughs> and so you sit there and go, okay, we got all this advanced, you know, building and construction that we're supposedly told, but one boulder on the back of a truck literally makes it flip. So then how did they move 500 of them, right? How did they cut them and, per and perfectly put them into shapes and triangles and circles and stars and all these beautiful, beautiful designs? And... Not only that, but how did they do it out of metal, right? A lot of these old world buildings with the Tartaria thing are made out of copper, brass, and gold, right? So you're telling me they were sitting, you know, making jewelry and, and designing these beautiful statues and structures out of gold and copper and brass and doing metal work while putting it up on top, while being on their horse and wagon, and then, you know, doing all of that on top of it. You start to go, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. We've clearly been lied to. Yeah, and it's like um, something doesn't add up, and we're trying to figure out why. What? Why would you hide that from us, right? I say knowledge is potential power because if you have the knowledge, you got to do something with it, right? And um, now that we have established, you know, a little bit of what Tartaria will signify in the brain, now that you know what it is, why haven't we heard about it? So I think a lot of the reason we haven't heard about a lot of the stuff is related to technology, which is what you were describing. Because when you look at a lot of these old world buildings, they used to have these domes on top of them, right? And these domes were made out of copper. They were made out of brass. They were made out of certain materials. They also used to have brass balls on top of them that were fractal antennas that had mercury inside and could rotate. And they could pick up on the atmospheric energy that's up in the air, right? And they could also balance out the atmosphere. Right. The, the, a lot of the lightning rods in which we were taught that lightning rods are to catch lightning. Lightning rods are also used to balance out the atmosphere. Right. You're, po you're pointing up towards the air as it spins. It's creating energy up into the air and it's also creating energy down. You look at a lot of those old fireplaces that are in these, you know, these buildings as well. A lot of them had stuff with uranium, radium, you know, all these different precious metals. They could gather energy out of these fireplaces to, to basically have their, all their lights turn on, right? Like all these old gas lamps would basically be able to all snap on at a finger. Now nice. remember, if all of that is possible out of a fireplace, right? Like let's just make it real simple, then you don't need natural gas, you don't need oil, you don't need this whole, you know, Rockefeller takeover of the energy system, right? You just would use what you already have. And based on the materials that are in your building, they also resonate at a frequency, right? They can be very healing. And when we look at a lot of, for example, the old world, like the cathedrals and all of these things, the pipe organs that used to play in those would emit certain frequencies to heal the entire body or structure the entire body instantaneously. So if you look at it between the, the technology over here, you have the energy on this side, right? And all of that, which we could learn about and go, oh, wow, I could do it all for next to nothing. That's number one, right? And then number two over here, you look at it at the healing standpoint and you go, okay, well, that would already decimate all of the system we have today, which is not healing people. It's making people more sick. So mm -hmm. that would take care of that because we'd use sound frequencies. And then it would also open up our mind into the fact that this was all stuff that was maybe only 150 years ago. You know, that's one big one, too, because, you know, a lot of these stories, right? We have a lot of these stories where it's, oh, you know, the, the this was built one million and 50 million and, and 100,000, what happened if this was all built 150 years ago, right? And we had, we are not paying attention because we have been told by the books, you know, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue and whatever else, but there's no ships to show that, you know, we don't have the ships, we don't see the ships, right? And a lot of the story in which we've been told, we don't see any of that, right? There's not, none of the stuff in the museum, but the thing is, is this would also change our minds to maybe our past, right? Maybe that people were very connected, right? That's another thing, right? If the, if, if these types of buildings were built all over the world, that means people were very connected. And that means they were very friendly, right? They weren't sitting fighting each other over things that they were telling us. 
And it's interesting, too, because when you look at a lot of the armor that people used to wear, supposedly, during the medieval times and all these things, those are all electrical conductors, right? When you wear that suit of armor, if I take your arm and I cover it with copper right now and I put it up against your arm, this area starts to basically, it creates energy, but it also begins to heal, right? You begin to heal this area. So those suits of armor could be something that can also harness the atmospheric energy that's all around us, and that could also elevate your consciousness to a higher potential, right? Because if you put, if I took, a, for example, an antenna and I placed it on top of my head and I put a helmet on and I put a full suit of armor on that supposedly they were using to, let's say, fight each other, you would start to gather energy like an antenna that we already are. So I feel like there's multiple different layers of why this information has been suppressed because it just, it opens up so many questions that even if you just question one narrative and just think, ah, you know, that doesn't really make any sense. Actually, I don't remember anybody fighting. All of a sudden, well then wait, what about all the other history you've been told, right? What about all the buildings when you go to the museum and the museum says, oh, this was done in, you know, 1702. And it's like, really? Well, what happened if they were very advanced in 1702 and they're just trying to show us a very primitive way that we actually weren't, right? It's just stuff that we have to start mm. questioning because when you look at the details of these buildings and the, the all of this, this these beautiful, just like things built out of sandstone that are like 500 feet high, you know, you sit there and think somebody was very advanced, right? And it may have been us, but we have forgotten because they have taken advantage of our memory and brainwashed us into believing that all of this was so long ago. And it fits the narrative of it was millions of years ago when they were supposedly pulling things with ropes and doing stuff like even in Egypt, right? They were tying ropes around it and pulling it. No, they weren't. They were very, very advanced, you know, and they don't want the information coming forward because they would have to rewrite all the books in which they BSed the entire time and they would have to rewrite them and tell you a whole new story. And I even remember I talked to somebody one time, I forget if it was online or something, and that's what they said. They said they'll never do it. And because it has, they had to have to rewrite every book and tell an entirely different story that is not the narrative we've been told. And you'd have to go to a different school with new books. And I feel like a lot of people that are homeschooled are, and with if they're armed with a with knowledge they can help undo that rewriting or the best thing i see us doing is just starting a new chapter of rediscovering and just sharing those things and then people will cover on their own as well so i want to highlight something that you mentioned you started talking about frequency and then i'm not sure if you were gonna if you were mentioning how the it's called cymatics right and when you apply sound frequencies to whether it be sand or some type of material, it creates a shape according to that frequency. Did you hear, or what are your thoughts on using that technology for um, designs? Because I think, I'm not sure if it's cathedrals, but some of the windows, um, they reflect the same shapes of what cymatics shows, which I'm like, all right, but the only way we are able to see this ourselves is with technology that we can tune frequencies. So how do we see that exact same frequency in the past? What are your thoughts on that? So I would say that they were very connected, you know, and this is a really simple example of that. When you look at these old world buildings and all of these old like statues, they always had a trumpet, right, in their hand, and they always wore a wreath, right? And if you take, for example, a trumpet, seven trumpets and seven drums, you can aim that sound at an object and you can actually cause it to levitate, right? It's very, very simple. Sound frequency can cause things to levitate. And you put something underneath so that the sound would reflect and it would bounce off of it so that it can cause that, uh, that object to levitate. The other thing too is like what you just described is, is when you would walk in these cathedrals or these sacred buildings or whatever it may be, the shapes and stained glass windows that are on there are showing you exactly what your water in your body is going to structure to. Right? So as soon as you make a sound or a chant or a prayer or whatever you would like to make up in the air, your whole cells and all your crystals in your body are going to resonate exactly at that frequency. And when you sit and think about that, we have the technology now with, for example, you take, take a speaker and you pour salt and you can see that. But the question is, is how were they seeing it at that time? Unless they were very, very in tune with sound frequencies and vibrations 
because that's how they were potentially moving things around, building things, and using sound. And if you look into, like, for example, the Coral Castle, there was this guy who basically created this entire stone castle for this woman that he was in love with who basically turned him down. He decided, I'm going to build this beautiful castle for her, all out of stone and all of these things. He worked at night. He was 106 pounds, and he used some unusual technology. And when he told everybody how he did it, how he moved these 300-ton boulders and made them into this entire, basically, little town so you can go visit it, he basically said, I knew the secrets to the pyramids. And when we look at all of those things with, you know, all this, these different types of buildings and all of the stuff related to frequency, we know that, for example, sound baths are very healing, right? But they were very connected to sound frequencies, chanting, you know, all of these things. And you can tune your body like a tuning fork very quickly, but they were also very in tune because if you think about it, they would do it in together, right? Think if you had a thousand people all utilizing sound frequency at the same time, imagine how much your mind would change instantaneously. It's kind of like you go, it's kind of like everybody goes into a meditation at the same time and their minds all start to sink, you know? So that was the awareness that people had. And even with the, the metal urgy and all the stuff they were doing with metals, you know, where was all the gold coming from? Where was all the, the mercury coming from? Where was all the brass and the copper? Right? If, if they're not mining anything, like what we're doing where we destroy things, well, then where was it coming from? How were they just making materials out of thin air and then crafting it, you know, in all these beautiful designs? So I kind of look at it like they were very, very, very connected, very in tune. And Edgar Cayce's work, when you look into all of his related to Atlantis, the Atlanteans, how the Atlanteans gave all the information to the Egyptians, the Mayans, all these different people and all this different stuff, you look at his stuff, and he said that people were so in tune with their intuition that they could just determine everything. And they used thought process to make things happen, which is similar to what I told you about John Keeley and his motor, where he used the ether, or the energy that was all around him, to connect to devices to turn them on. So you can really start to think, hmm, how advanced were people if they were just using their minds Right. Then instead of what we've been taught with all the stuff that we do now, you know, you start to think people probably were very, very advanced, you know, and that they could see this. The other thing, too, is they might utilize certain plants like blue lotus, right, or mugwort or all these different plants to really connect into nature so that they can also get information. Right. And you always see if you look in Egypt, blue lotus, they were drinking it all all the time. Why? Because it connects you to a higher frequency so that you can see a different picture in front of you, which would also give you access to different information in which you would not be normally accessing. You know, so a lot of these things, I feel like if you look at all of this, they're just very in tune with the earth and very in tune with everything around them and their surroundings so that they could be able to just do whatever they felt like doing. I do feel like um, it's like a living in a fantasy world, right? Where everybody's connected and you have very simple, it does actually remind me of, um, I guess, Eckhart Tolle, like, like, like the, the magical world where you have like these elaborate decorations for your house and people are living off the land and it's, you don't see a cell phone, but they're able to communicate with each other in their living room with like an, uh, smoke and, uh, lights and, you know, the earth energy you know like it would be just a different way to communicate um, over long distances and i see somehow somehow that world reset or was taken down and um i i do hope that more conversations start off of this one and off of other ones so that we can start getting closer and getting back to that that would be awesome you know I would love to learn a little bit about the architecture and, and not necessarily have a coral castle or, but something close to it where, you know, as we relearn these technologies, reintroduce it in a new way, right? Using what we know, what we know now. Um, I do want to get into the mud floods and the world fair fires, because I know people are going to be asking about that because, um, one of the reasons why some people believe that we don't see as much of this architecture is 
it was destroyed and there was some type of huge mud flood because it would be everywhere. You can't destroy like a whole thing. Like, how does that work? Um, what are your thoughts on that? So there's a couple things that come to mind. There's two great channels on this as well, too, which I also want to put in here because I like to give people as much information as I can. But John Levy has a great, great channel on YouTube with tons of information on this. And then Minds Unveiled, they have great information on this as well, too. And they've done so much work. And I think everybody should look into their work because this is where it goes into the mud floods and all of these things. And they've showed this. But the thing is, with when we start to look at all of these like resets and these fires and hurricanes and storms and all of these things, you know, they really did a number on destroying a lot of this stuff, right? Even with the wars, World War One and World War Two were also basically fabricated to destroy a lot of infrastructure, a lot of technology, a lot of these buildings, you know, resetting things, right? Like a lot of the bombings in Japan was to get rid of the architecture that looks the same in the United States, right? So really uh, interesting. You know, you see that that was destroyed so that it doesn't look the same, right? You have different buildings and different now designed so that it looks like it's different. But in reality, it was the same stuff that was also in the United States. So, you know, that's a big one. Number two, we look at these hurricanes, at these fires, right? We look at the World Fair. You know, what's interesting about these World Fairs is that supposedly they built these within one year, right? Like whatever these structures may be, they, they, that's the, always the storyline. It's one year and somehow they have no construction photos, but they built them within one year. And so, you know, they, they built these buildings and then they would have these fairs where they would invite all these people who basically most likely weren't even from the area or from the country, right? It was pretty much people who were shipped in like orphan trains and things like that. But, you know, they basically had these people come to these fairs so that they could be like blown away, right? Almost like a carnival or like going to an amusement park. And you're like, oh, you know, your eyes are just so captivated. But a lot of the technology was shown in which they had at that time, right? Like they showed atmospheric technology. They showed like these blimps that could fit in a building. You know, when you sit there and think they had a blimp at the time that could fit in a building. Think of how large that building was. But then all of a sudden, one year later, after, for example, that World Fair, there's always a fire or a storm or something that completely destroys all of that. And they even had some... The, I think it's called the Crystal Palace. It was in London. All crystal, right? All quartz, all beautiful glass. Absolutely stunning. They had so many events at that. Oh, just one day, it just burned down. You know, it just got destroyed and whatever. And when you look at these buildings with the material that they used to have, you sit there and wonder, well, how did that burn, right? Unless there's yeah. something else we don't know, something maybe with plasma or something maybe, you know, like a DEW, Something that we don't understand because these buildings were built out of this super heavy stone, like just solid stone, you know, like layers and layers thick. And when I was in California, I was in a building that's an old world, right? It's it's thick. It's and, and the acoustics are perfect in it as well, too. But related to that, you have those incidents which occurred. And then also, too, you know, you have the, the flooding of the mud, right? And all of these things. And it's interesting because the best way to describe what we live on is that we live on layers, right? There's layers and we're sitting right now at the surface. We cannot see. I took my buddy up to the mountain the other day and I showed him all this quartz, layers and layers of quartz. It almost looks like you're standing on a quartz building, right? At the top of the mountain at 3,700 feet. So you're up there. It took us a while to get up there and everything else, but layers and layers of quartz, right? And the question is, is I'm sitting here right now on the road what layer is this, right? If you covered this with mud and completely destroyed everything at this layer, what would you be at? The next layer up, right? And then they build these layers on top of layers on top of layers. And then all of a sudden one day, for example, New York City, they're like, oh, we're having all these potholes just go crazy and cars are falling in them. They're falling in them because that's the next layer below that you can't see, right? So when these reset things happen with mud floods and all of this stuff, they just kept building up. And for example, you go up to Jerome, Arizona, it's where all the copper comes from. And they have so many copper mines, you know, and everything else. And you look at all of these different this, the cities and things. And like the buildings are like, you know, you have like a flat surface like this, and the building is built above the surface, but it's on like an angle. Like it almost looks like, you know, they just went up another layer and then put the building because the windows are in the ground. You know, that, yeah. so they were obviously covered with mud or some sort of something 
that pretty much engulfed everything at one time. And, you know, it really goes into wonder how many times has things, how many times have things been reset, right? How many times has this occurred? What year are we in, right? Because I don't even believe that I live in 2023 anymore and whatever else. What year am I in? What's the timeline, right? Because when we look at all these calendars and we get into all these calendars too, a lot of them don't even make any sense, right? Like we have our calendar currently, which I think is like the Gregorian calendar. Then you have like the Ethiopian calendar, which is supposed to be, I think, 10 years behind or, or whichever it is. So the thing is, is if we have all these different timelines, how am I supposed to tell that people are telling me the truth? And then when you've seen these towns, like people can go look up all the world fairs, go look in San Francisco, New York City, you know, look in Chicago, you know, look at what things used to look like. I mean, buildings, it's, it's mind blowing to think that things were built like that. And then all of a sudden, one day they were destroyed. It just magically, you know, and that's the thing. It's like one day it just fell over and this castle fell apart. And it's like a lot of that doesn't make any sense, you know, unless we weren't connected with technology like we are today and you were able to, for example, reset certain places at a time, right? You would cause something maybe with the weather, maybe with something we don't know, maybe with the Ark of the Covenant, you know, we can go into that. That's obviously a device and things like that, you know, maybe with electromagnetic some sort of weapons, right? Frequency devices, the fascies, you know, people can look into that as well too, you know, but a lot of different things you sit there and go, hmm, maybe there's a lot more to it. Maybe they would build up these towns and then destroy them, right? Afterwards, mm. or let them build up and then kind of see where they would get and then reset it, you know? So these are all things when we start to look at these things and these floods and these hurricanes. And the most craziest one was like, I think it was like South Carolina where they got hit with like a hurricane a fire, a hurricane, a flood, a fire, and a hurricane in six what? months, you know? And it's like, what, what, does everybody just start throwing matches all over? And then somebody was like, you know, oh, just the water is rushing. Things that don't make any sense. And when you go underneath a lot of these old world towns, there's so much underneath. You have tunnels, you have layers, you can go like seven layers below. So then the question is, is who was living below ground? Right? Because a lot of, if you look into Native American folklore and, or the, the stories of Native Americans, like the Hopis and these people, they came out of the earth. That's what they were told. That's the story. They one day came out of the earth, you know, and it's interesting. So when you start looking at all of that, you start to go, well, then what layer were they on? Right? Like, where did they come <laughs> from? You know, like how many, what, what it was it like 50 layers below us? You know, and that's the part of all these stories that don't make a lot of sense from the traditional, for example, Christopher Columbus came here and supposedly he was the first person. But it's funny because when you look at the maps of 1400s, North America was already discovered and there were castles drawn all over it. So who built the castles, right? Who put the castles in the country if supposedly they were just starting to explore it and there were already castles? Then when they went to Mexico, there were already pyramids and all these beautiful things. Who did all that? You know, so we start to act, we have to really ask questions. And that's why when I got into this and started really looking at things and analyzing, I started realizing a lot of this doesn't make any sense. And, you know, a lot of these resets that we've, you know, seen in these timelines, a lot of that time is when technology also vanished or also became suppressed, right? And why would they want to do any of that? Because then you can bring that technology back using somebody else with a fabricated story and then they invented it and then sell them back some really basically junky technology in comparison. And then, you know, you can basically make money off of that over the period of time. Oh man, that was a, that was a good download of information right there. Um, you mentioned a couple of, uh, a bunch of stuff and, um, I couldn't help but think, are you familiar with that cartoon Futurama? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. And they talk about how the, uh, Leela, the, one of the main characters, her parents are mutants and they live underground and underground. There's like this whole city and they, it, when they start the show, it's, a, it, they show that over the eons, there's layers and layers of civilizations. And uh, it made me think of that. I'm like, someone knows something. You don't just talk about that. You don't just mention that. And then you have these movies. Again, I grew up watching a lot of TV growing up, so I'm, I'm referencing a lot of movies, but I forgot what movie it is. There's a bunch of them where 
they go on in to underground in the city new york kind of like i think um like one of a recent one was spider-man like they're in the the tunnels and i'm like that's deep like that is deep that is a gaping like that's a cave like i didn't know it goes down that far that's nuts you have these these tubes for the water and i'm like what's below that what what uh, why would you have such a huge opening for just feeding water through and then how long did it take to make that or did you hijack something and and redesign it or whatever and there's a lot of questions there there's a lot of questions and you know we went we went from some of the tech to it you know being a lost civilization and there's most likely i mean we have atlantis we have lemuria um there's definitely other civilizations that are more well known because there's movies about them um, and then you have, um, you know, the, the acoustics in the churches, uh, we, you know, uh, you, that reminds me, you know, the stadiums where oh, they yes. have the acoustics. I mean, yep. well, why don't we use that? We have speakers, but you can all easily just, it, it, it's more cost efficient to create a stadium where the acoustics just push, push out to, to the people and you don't have to spend electricity on a mic. You don't have to shout. And then everything is just there right but again it it all comes down to money and um you know oh oh you know what i do have a question for you this something popped up in my head uh, high school physics class they were talking about um tesla and this goes along with suppressed technology that i'm sure tesla is resurfacing and it was wireless or radio um electricity and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the only reason why we have copper wires for our electronics is because it's profitable. And we've, since the dawn of being able to introduce electricity, we've been able to wirelessly send electricity in the air. Um, do you have any comments on that? And do you feel that that it was a major part of a civilization like Tartaria because, it, because of the ar architecture? So I would definitely say that's definitely a, a, a big part. And the reason I say that is because, you know, when you look at, for example, Tesla, and it's a great example, right? A lot of his inventions that he was coming up with, he was coming up with inventions like every week, right? Or every month, something crazy, right? And you sit there and think like, I mean, you can think up things, right? Like I, I've thought up a bunch of different thoughts and whatever else, and that's fine. And you can go out into nature, connect yourself. But to keep creating at such a fast pace that every single month you're creating a patent, creating a patent, creating a patent, almost feels like you're being fed those patents. And remember, Tesla was also an orphan, right? So that's another thing as well. His whole family lineage, they, they had no connectivity to his family lineage. He was just this person who appeared and had all of these technologies and all of these things. He also competed against Einstein at that time and all the other people who were also brought on board. And when you look at that board, right, there's about eight of them in that little group and that click, they also were all creating those things at that time. Right. So there was just a small handful of people who seemed to be really in tune with this technology and seemed to just know it all. Right. And, 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 and be so accurate, like not even like mess up. Right. Like make something and mess up and whatever. But to create and create and create and create. Right. Almost like they were given the books to be able to get that information. But when you look at all of the stuff like you just said, relating to like antennas and all of these things, that's what these buildings used to have. They used to have fractal antennas on top of them, and they were designed out of all different types of materials so that they could harness the energy and the different wavelengths that are all around us, right? Because each different material will resonate at a different wavelength and then basically absorb that wavelength. And these different materials will pick up on different things. So with the antennas, they were made out of different materials, right? Though, so some being copper, some being brass, some being gold. And it's interesting because we are told the copper toxicity thing, right? Copper is, you know, toxic and they say all of this on, on the internet and whatever else. But it's interesting. They never say gold is toxic. Why? Because gold has the highest price point. So it's interesting. You start to see a lot of these things. You know, copper is, is, is not a, an expensive material, but you start to see a lot of these things that, you know, gold is very expensive. And imagine making, for example, antennas out of gold. Imagine the conductivity and the electrical charge in which you could create or harness or harvest, whichever word you want, if you had things made out of gold. And a lot of these old world buildings, when they were using what you described, like wireless technology, emitting frequencies far distances, 
they used gold and other high precious metals so that they could make better antennas so that they could emit farther distances. They also made them into more intricate detailed patterns and that's what Tesla was creating, right? He had that bowl with the, the, the rods going down in Colorado Springs. That is an atmospheric antenna to emit frequencies and that ball probably had mercury in it, I would assume, at the top of it. And then there was water below, which is causing a vortex and emitting all of these frequencies out so that people could get free energy from the earth below. But a lot of these things contained a lot of precious metals and materials that are just not talked about. And it's interesting because if you had access to all of these things, imagine the antennas and the things you could be creating just testing something out. For example, if I took copper, wrapped it with brass, put a gold ball on top of it. You know, the, the, the ability to harness energy or emit energy would be amplified so much because all of those materials are heavy, heavy conductors. They conduct electricity, you know, so they also boost magnetism as well with magnets. You know, and if you ever take copper, put it above a magnet with a battery, it'll spin indefinitely, you know, and that's the, that's the beautiful part of all of this. But I feel like personally, Tesla was given a lot of this information as with those other eight people. And because they were given this information, they were pretty much just kind of bringing it back out. But then at the same time, people like Einstein, right, were put in place to debunk anybody who talked about the ether, right? He actually said, you know, there's no such thing. But it's funny because a week before that, he said there was because he was actually investigating John Keeley and his in ether apparatuses. So they knew about this technology and they probably wondered how did this person come up with this at that time? And they were baffled that Keeley was also connected to the ancient world and knew how to harness things. And it was fascinating. When you look at his technology that he created, everything was in a sphere. He had rotating spheres in which can pick up on the frequency of his brain and everything that he's drawing. He would draw symbols on the wall and he could turn these things on. Right? So this is a whole nother level of technology, which is not talked about. So a lot of the times our eyes, like you just said, are directed towards Nikola Tesla, but not directed towards these other people who were also doing something very, very advanced and understood the technology from the past, which was being wiped out or suppressed due to these resets to get rid of this information so that it's not put into the public because think about that if everyone started replicating it the the energy devices would never go away right but if you start taking one person out at a time or there's these things where it starts going missing or their books vanished or supposedly they fell off a cliff or whatever it may be then all that information gets removed and then we stick to the narrative right tesla created it he did it he was the one but maybe he wasn't, you know, and that's where I started questioning, hmm, how do you have access to so much information, you know, and whatever, because at that time, if everything was books, right, you would, you, if, if, if you're not, let's say, traveling around, what were the books just getting shipped into your house? Because you, we didn't have, you know, a shipping company at that time bringing the books. So a lot of the things don't make a lot of sense how this information kept being present, unless you wanted a handful of people to control all the information and control the narrative and then make them the hero, right? Because that's what I kind of noticed with all of these history lines is that they always pick somebody, like let's say Christopher Columbus, and they paint him a picture and they make it look like that was the person and they were the hero while they completely do not teach us about all of these other people who were very, very advanced and very into technology and understanding all of that. And a lot of that goes even more into the red haired people who were like 12 feet tall and the giants and all of these people, red hair, green eyes, right? And all of these people that's never talked about, but they found thousands of people who look like that and have those characteristics, even in China as well too, you know, all over the place. And it's like, well, if there are all these like red haired, you know, 12 foot green eyed giants walking around, shouldn't we talk about them? Instead, we direct our time, like you just said, to Tesla and that little group so that we can give all our power to those people while there was so much going on over here. And um, was what is the, what is that called? Is that a psyop? Is that um, someone calls it a limited hangout, right? Where you you create this this amazing thing. Hey, you know, misdirection as like a like a magician, you know, 
wash the hands so you don't know what I'm doing or listen to what I'm saying so you don't know what I'm doing behind, you know, as you're not paying attention. And um, it's, you, you pose um, a lot of interesting questions and a lot of interesting thoughts. And I mean, the red haired giants, uh, if you're in that world of uh, seeking the unknown, you would have definitely heard about that, especially with like the bones that are disappearing from um what's that museum then they have like these huge bones and then they're just gone or if there's a if there's a, a finding they have to come in and you know do the preservation and you know we have to we have to put it somewhere where it's going to be safe and then it's like what what bones what are you talking about yes that's the smithsonian they do yes. all of that they always have access to everything first anytime there's anything that pops out they're the first person to go in there and then they determine where it goes and if it's released or not so if you really think about it, if our history is actually what it's been told, then why are people being able to dictate what is released and what is not? And why are they allowed to hide things if they choose, right? If there's a skull that shows an elongated skull or somebody with a different type of skull, right, that we haven't been taught about, that changes the whole story again, too. Your horse and wagon Oregon Trail story doesn't seem to add up if all of a sudden there's a completely different race of people or humans or something roaming around the planet. And then not only that, what happened if their body was completely different? What happened if they were half human, half animal? You know, these are all questions that are not being answered, but you find bones and then you can say, well, it looks like it's a dinosaur. What happened if it's not a dinosaur? What happened if it's some other thing that we haven't even been taught about? And you only found a piece of it, right? You found this like supposedly one bone and this one bone is the entire animal. And it's like, how do you even know that this one little bone is the, the neck bone to the animal that's like 500 feet long, right? How, how, how did you know that? It's just it's a lot of questions, a lot of things that don't make sense. And you start to unravel the stories and all of those timelines, because, you know, if somebody like, for example, the Smithsonian is taking all this information, shouldn't they be presenting it like in the, to the public, right? If they found something, shouldn't you tell the people like, you know, I just found these red haired 12 foot people in your backyard you know, because then the person is confused and then it's just a game, you know, and it's a game of withholding the information and then trying to say when you want to release it. But in reality, then they change the narrative so that they can cause us to fight against each other, right? Because they can say, oh, this tribe and this person and these people were fighting against people. Maybe it wasn't like that. Maybe they were all unified and had this technology and loved it and were actually very connected. Oh, what a story that would be. Right. Because that completely goes against everything we've been taught again. Right. Everybody's mm -hmm. fighting and people are going to civilizations and conquering and all this like castles and people or whatever. The funniest thing about it all is when you look at the star forts and how like they put these cannons in these star forts. And it's like, why would you put a cannon in a hole that you can't even see out of? Right. Like, you know, <laughs> that is why true. Would you, like, why, would you, why would you even do that? What are you just going to say fire? You know, and just what, the, the ships are coming, you just are firing, you know, it's just like, what kind of defense mechanism is that? You know, so illogical things, and it's in the middle of the ocean, so you would get invaded within a second, right? Like the ships would come from every angle and invade your home. So it's like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, and if you take it a step further, you got the Statue of Liberty, which is also a star fort, and this big, huge copper statue that's just sitting out in the middle of the ocean and it's like how did they get that there did they put it on a ship you know well did they hoist it you know doesn't make a lot of sense and he crafted it out of copper like he built it out of copper supposedly in 16 what 1656 mm -hmm. when supposedly they're walking around with like kerosene lamps and like they're you know their horses are dying of dysentery and whatever else they were telling us <laughs> yeah uh, hashtag oregon trail Everybody oh died of something hor horrific. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. And I say that because, for example, me and, you know, my friends, we went hiking the other day, you know, and I, I showed them this spot and I just said, think of how much energy it just took for us to get up here, right? And we're walking, we're in shoes, you know, we have water, we have food, right? Like we, we have all the things that we need, have snacks and whatever. But think of how much energy it just took for us to get up there. You know, so now when you start to analyze these things, it doesn't make any sense that you were bringing some horses, you brought a wagon, you know, you supposedly had a hammer and a chisel, right? And like, what's that even made out of? Because it could fall apart, you know, whatever. You know, so you brought all these tools, you threw them on your back, and then you went up this mountain and started building 
And when you look at a lot of societies that were nomadic, right, they actually just build, for example, if they were nomadic, they would build like little huts, kind of like the Huns and Attila the Huns and all. They build huts because they were always on the move. They didn't just sit down and build a 10-story cathedral, you know, because they just decided like, oh, this is a good spot. I'm going to start building it. You know, they would build something that they could move with, right? It was very easy for them to be nomadic. That's the whole point. So when people, you know, when these with these history lines where they say they settled down and they built all this in a couple of years, it's like they just all of a sudden, they didn't have any of these materials, but they just got them and then decided to construct 10-story buildings out of granite, stone, and all different beautiful things. And just then they decided, okay, this is the perfect place. You know, this is great now. And it's, it's just stuff that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it, and unfortunately, um, a lot of people are in a place where, or I would say too many people are in a place where they just feel like they lack the time to dive into these holes. And it's almost like it's uh, overwhelming to know about this stuff or even process it, right? And um, to to your point where if you just take some time Things don't make sense. And yeah, it's up to you if you want to go further into it. But my question to you is now that we are aware of Tartaria, aware of potential and most likely lies uh, in the history books, I, we, we know that there's lies, but we just don't know to the extent, right? Or, or um, false truths, which is a weird phrase in itself. Um, what do you, what, is there any um, suggestions or advice that you can give somebody that is listening to this and they're learning about this for the first time? Like what, what can they do with that information, how they can apply it to their everyday? Um, how can they benefit from that other than knowing now that, you know, <laughs> oh, everything you know is a lie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, you know, instead of feeling like that, like what, how, how can they take that home? Well, it just kind of makes you rethink a lot of things. And I think that's what we have to have an open mind of things and just kind of rethink your past, right? Rethink about things, you know, even with your family, wherever your family came from, you know, supposedly, as they say, you know, rethink things like that, you know, and really maybe start to question maybe something in maybe your family lineage as well, where they appeared, how they got here, right? All of these things. But when you get into all this old world history, it really just, in my eyes, it just shows that there was a lot of beautiful things happening that we just have been suppressed from learning about. And the more you get into it and the more you learn about it, the more you wanna see it, the more you wanna visit it, the more you wanna go to these places, the more you wanna, you know, you see a building and go, oh yeah, no, that's that was not built last, you know, last year or whatever else. Like you can start to see it everywhere. And it really kind of, in my opinion, is a very reassuring thing because it shows that it's still here, right? It's still present. They didn't destroy everything. This information is still here, it's still present. And that means that we can bring that back, right? We can learn, and it's not hard, to bring this technology back and also bring back these ancient ways of using sound and healing and frequencies and copper and metals and electroculture and all those topics we've talked about as well. We're just bringing those things to light and we can do all of that because it takes so long for them to brainwash the mind, right? It takes years and years and years, but it only takes seconds to unwind all that brainwashing. And that's the magic of this. And I see it as just an eye-opening thing to just see in a different light. Because when we start to question one thing, we can start to question other things, right? Like we can question everything that happened in 2020. We can question everything that happened related to how we're supposed to eat. You know, we can start questioning all these things and it really just opens the mind into different things and starts to go, hmm, you know, that's a really different way of looking at something. And now I can kind of see it with a different, with a different light. And I think that's really important. We shouldn't lose our mind to be, you know, like you said, everything's all oh, whatever. You know, it's just, it's awareness, right? It's awareness and that's what we need to do because that awareness can spread to others so quickly and it can open up minds so fast to where that's the best part about it. Is, and that's what I see. And that's why every time even just talking about these different things and these topics with you and putting this information out there, I just hope that it can open up other minds so people can do research and look into these things because it's fun, right? It's fun to learn about the actual truth. That's why they make school so boring, right? They don't, they don't make it with something that's like having fun. They're just monotonous. And so it's boring for a reason because all of this stuff would open our eyes to so much more and just open up that creative mind, which is being disconnected, right? They tell you the same goofy story. So it seems like, ah, uh, you know, 
I don't know if we could do that or whatever, but it's like, if I found out it's 150 years ago, well, then I could do that today, right? And what's stopping me or my family or my kids from learning about these things? And that's why I always try to cite different people and sources and things so that they can then look into these things and teach their children and we can have a different path of what we've been taught, right? Because this system we currently have is so goofy and so you know inverted altogether yeah that it needs to change. And if that's how it happens, where people have to become aware, then so be it. And that's how I kind of see it. And I see it as it opened my eyes and made me go, wow, I've been duped again, you know, on so many levels. And, you know, sitting here watching this video going, oh my God, this, what do you mean? But at the same time, I thought, hmm, you know, it's really interesting. And I wonder how they did it, right? Because then your mind starts to wonder, okay, well, what, how do we create that? How do we use that sound frequency to heal our bodies or to create this technology? Or what were the materials that they were using? And should we build our houses out of those materials? Right, this is stuff to start questioning. Why are we using fake synthetic plastics, DuPont's plastics and all of these things, right? Shouldn't be we using natural materials? And then it kind of starts to stem into, maybe we need to change our lifestyle a little bit. And I guess this is all where I kind of see where it opens your eyes into you know, different lifestyles and different things in which we would never think about because if we keep the mind very closed, we're never going to go that route. You know, it's going to stay all the same. So that's kind of how I see it with the whole situation of just opening the eyes to something new and really just giving an ability to learn about something that is fun to learn about and really so we can understand. And it also creates resistance against all the nonsense that they try to pull on you. Mm -hmm. Right. If they start trying to say something about the history, it's like, not really, you know, it's not actually how it happened, but you can keep going with that narrative and do whatever, <laughs> but I'm not going to believe it, you know, and same with the museums. You could put your little pieces of paper and tell me that some wagon and a horse came up here, but looking at the terrain, I doubt that, you know, I really doubt that. And you probably just took some rocks and threw them off on the ground to try to make me believe that people are throwing rocks on top of each other, you know, so it really gives you that discernment or the ability to see through the, the baloney that's the best way to say the sermon is a is a huge key word right now that's definitely needed and all the education and and the awareness that you're helping bring about is definitely helping with that it definitely has helped me on my journey with your help as well so i do appreciate that and i think that's huge 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 for everybody to be aware of that mm -hmm. as you there is a point there is a point in finding out the answers to those questions, right? Give us some time, even if it's like 10 minutes a day, if you have a long drive to work, now you have something to listen to as you wake yourself up and empower yourself to be more discerning. Um, so as we wrap it up, Matt, is there anything new that you wanted to share or something that you're working on or some of those um, channels that you suggested people can look into to learn a little bit more about what we were talking about today? So as for what I'm doing, same old, just trucking along, trying to put out the information. But other than that, you have Minds Unveiled and you have John Levy. They have two great channels and all of their stuff is very in-depth. Minds Unveiled has hours of long information where some of their videos are three to four hours. So they will give you all the, you know, the information on all these different things and different topics. And then you have John Levy's videos, which are about 20 minutes to 25 minutes. And each one will go heavily in depth into everything. I mean, I just watched the one he showed about Japan and how, you know, the Japanese uh, architecture is the new architecture first compared to what it used to be, right? So you really start to think, okay, so then who originally lived in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Because if this architecture is tied to the current people, who are the people who originally lived there, right? So all these things, but those two channels do such a great job and they reference a lot of other people as well and some great books as well too. But it just, yeah, I just see it as just have open minds, you know, have an open mind to everything that you ever learn and just never take really anything at face value, you know, to see it for what it is and then try to figure out from your mind, do you feel that that's true? If not, you know, then do, then then go with that, you know, and, and you, your instinct, like we were talking about, even relating it all the way back to Atlantis, you know, with the Atlanteans and them, instinct was key, right? Your instinct will tell you everything. So I feel like those two cover just about everything. But other than that, same old, same old, just putting out information and working on new, some new products and things and just uh, trucking along, trying to uh, help put out the information. Cool, man. 
Well, thanks again for coming on. As always, it was a pleasure having a conversation with you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here and put it up. Yeah. <laughs>